All right, I think we're good. So welcome everyone to our, uh, we typically, like I said earlier, don't have an October leaders webinar, but because uh, Laura was gracious to get us on her schedule over this next few months, she's gonna actually be sharing with us for a few months. So I'm gonna introduce you, um, Laura, because some people may not know you. Okay. Um, many of you have probably seen her name, but this is Dr. Laura Cole and she's the one that you might not recognize. <laughs> so she's got glasses on, her hair is pulled back, she got what do you have a teal or turquoise top on? There you are, you're waving. That's Dr. Laura Cole. So she's a certified life mastery consultant. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And she owns Inspirational Outcomes, which is a motivational consulting firm that offers coaching, classes, and presenting. And I'm reading this, so you have to pardon me while I look down. Um, she began her relationship with Pink Zebra over two years ago, and I met you for the first time, I think, a year ago would be the change in January yes. 18, 19, 19. Yes. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, so she met Dana, and she presented at Be the Change, which is where I saw you, in Houston twice, in both the leadership and the consultant training at Reunion. So she was at a reunion in July, for any of you that may not have seen her. Um, and she has had over a dozen Pink Zebra clients that she's been blessed to work with over the past couple years. And she loves what we do and what our company stands for. So you all know, hi, we have a lot more people joining us. One of our new directors is on, hi, Crystal. <laughs> um, Stacy, Cindy, Tabitha, Gina, Sylvia, welcome, all of you. So uh, we have a goal in the month of November. Right now we're in a current uh, CMA award thing that's going on for 3,000 parties this month. And you probably heard Times uh, live today. So the, the goal is uh, in, well in hand. We feel like really, but we're gonna make it this time. It's really good. So in November, the goal is to um, secure 15,000 new customers. So uh, Laura has worked with several of our consultants and specifically Jessica Washington stands out in my mind because I know her story so well, how you really turned her business around where she was no longer just selling to someone, she was really working on building that relationship. And so it has made a tremendous difference in her business over this last year. So we just thought with what we've got going on in November, you are so great at helping consultants really develop those relationships and Really, um, I think maybe the way you're going to say it is that it's, I, I think, dealing with a customer with heart or with gratitude. I'm one of those two things. Being so anyway, client, client heart centered. There you go. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let you do your thing, Laura, and welcome. And we certainly are very happy to have you here. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I would love to go ahead and start out the way I start every session, whether it's with a group or with a one-on-one -on -one client. I'd love to. It's called Generate State. And we want to do this because when we're not feeling so great, whether we're worried or we're mad or we're sad or whatever that is, it can take us up to a higher vibration. And the way you generate state, you do two things. You say one thing you're proud, one thing you're thankful for, and one thing you're proud of. So if three of you wouldn't mind volunteering, and it's just short, short and sweet. For example, I am so thankful that I get to be on this call tonight because I've been looking forward to this for months. And I am so proud of myself because my daughter got her driver's permit yesterday <laughs> and I've already taken her out twice. And you didn't I'm very proud out. of myself. <laughs> yes. Good. So thankful for and proud of. So is would there be three of you that are willing to share a thankful for and proud of? I'm gonna call on him. Crystal's gonna do it. I know it. All right, I'll do it. Good. Um, I'm thankful for being here actually today. I'm thankful for my family and friends around me, and I'm thankful for not giving up. And what are you proud of? I'm proud of. Um, How about your recent promotion? <laughs> Would that be? I'm, not, I'm proud of the recent promotion, yes. <laughs> not that I want to put words in your mouth or anything, but I got to believe you're proud of that. So she just became a director, and she promoted in September. So she's. New to that director scene, very exciting. Awesome. All right, who else wants to speak up? Caitlin will do it. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> okay, um, I am thankful for being here because I love the opportunity to listen to Laura at any point. And I am proud of my accomplishment in September. I did a lot more than I thought I was going to do, so I am proud of that. 
Awesome, very cool. Okay, I wanna see if anybody else wants to volunteer, and if not, I'm gonna pick somebody. All right, I'm gonna pick, let's see. Oh, I think, Tabitha, are you willing to share? Okay, you gotta unmute. Okay, now we got okay. you. <laughs> I was like, Good. nobody else is going to do it. <laughs> Good, thank you. Um, I'm, thankful for, I'm thankful for my home, my fiance, my son, my pets, my business, and my team. And I'm definitely grateful for my team. My team has grown and they're amazing me every day. This company is a blessing and I'm just really happy to be a part of it. Okay, so what are you proud of? I'm proud of my accomplishments with Pink Zebra. Um, I've done more in this company in two years than I never imagined that I could do, you know, um, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I'm at without my, my sponsor, Crystal. I'm, I'm very grateful to her. Crystal Kelly. Yes. You figured <laughs> you met that Crystal for sure. <laughs> so great. Thank you. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. That's just a little technique that I wanted to teach you and they don't have to be extensive. They can be, I'm thankful for the running water in my house. I'm proud that I fed my kids today when I didn't feel like it, okay? Or sometimes it's even, I'm proud of myself that I got out of bed today. So when you're feeling yourself kind of low and not very good, think, okay, grateful for and proud of and it'll help bring you up a little bit. All right, just a little tidbit. And we'll do that every time we meet. So mm -hmm. what I wanna to talk to you today is about serving. Um, one thing that Jessica Washington has expressed that really helped her the most is from going me-centered to everyone else centered. Uh, this is called the law of circulation uh, because people think, okay, when I get this money, then I'm gonna give back to whatever. But what the law of circulation actually shows is that the more we give, the more we do receive into our lives. And so there's three different areas that I wanna cover tonight in relation to that. And the first one is, one way that we can give to our client is to listen, to really listen to their story and what is going on with them. And I should probably say consultant instead of client. I apologize. I've been interpreting all day with clients. So with the consultants or with um, the customer that wants to buy a candle, one of my favorite, favorite examples, and I believe I told this at reunion, was that one of my clients um, told a story of a woman that came up to her in, in a booth at a fair or whatever, it's not important, and just really started listening to her story. And her story was how much she missed her grandmother. And she was sad and all this. Well, the pink zebra consultant said, what do you remember smelling? when you walked into her home. And so she started explaining the different aromas and took her back. Well, the Pink Zebra consultant put together, mixed together these smells in a candle and was able, able to give that to her, which brought in a lot more candle orders, a lot more references, repeat business, all of that. But it's because she didn't just listen to what candle do you want? What smells do you want? She listened to her story and what was going on in her heart and was able to connect with her through her heart. That's what I'm talking about, the heart-centered client approach, okay? So that is the first one. And this is in relation to not only if somebody is buying a candle from you, but also with your team members about what's going on with them. Because often it's not, I'm frustrated because I'm not bringing enough people in. I'm frustrated and the underlying reason is maybe my kids are driving me crazy or I feel like I haven't been a good mother today or I'm really concerned about paying my mortgage or whatever that is. You don't ever wanna keep people in that place, but to listen and repeat back what they say because people are really yearning to be heard. So no matter what spectrum of what it is in this business, connect with people and really listen to their story. Okay, that's my first point. The second one is to continue building relationships. Now, when this person walks up to your table for the first time, regardless if they stay there for two minutes or 20 minutes, you wanna start developing that relationship. You listen at that moment, you get your email or whatever you can to remain, have that contact information, and then you reach out. 
and it can be very discouraging when you were trying to bring somebody in on your team or maybe want to party and they say no or whatever that is but for every single person that you encounter and I don't care if it's somebody on your team or a person that walks up to your table uh, a hopeful wish person on your email list whatever that is I want you to go into gratitude for every one of them especially for the ones that walk away because that is where your power is when you immediately go into they're not serving me because they didn't join my team, it's going to push even more people away. But when you go into gratitude that you even have the opportunity to talk to them, you have the opportunity to tell them of the wonderful things that Pink Zebra offers, the incentive trips, the ability to do your own hours, all these wonderful things, how you know Pink Zebra serves you, you just planted that seed. And maybe at that moment, they don't realize that's a bad step for them, or maybe they even do, but they're so scared, they got to walk away. They can't handle it. It's too much because it's so new. So even if the person walks away or you don't get the response that you would love, still go into gratitude for that person that you helped change their lives, that they gave you some of their time, no matter how long it was, and just knowing that you plant that seed. And on the same respect about telling your story, that you're telling your story in order to serve them, how you could improve your life, their lives. And we're going to talk about a three story process in just a moment. So uh, one of my best examples is with Dana. I actually met her at a Houston networking event that had nothing to do with Pink Zebra. It was one of the first presentations um, that I did for a networking women's group and she was in the audience and she came up to me afterwards and came up to my table and I knew we were on the same wavelength almost immediately. And so when people are interested to work with me, we set up what's called a strategy session because I help people develop their vision, what paradigms or thought patterns are getting in the way. And, and then if you feel your soul feels like you want to work with me, then you say, sign me up. Okay, so I got to work with her on her amazing vision and found some blockages that she had. And then I asked her, I said, how do you feel about, you know, working with me, which I wanted it from head to toe because I knew how successful she would be. She's like, mm, not right now. <laughs> and inside I was going, oh, she would make the best client because you all know how hard Dana works. That's, that's what I love in my life. People that are motivated to grow. But I'm, I maintain that relationship because she's amazing. And just would call her periodically, you know, say I'm here to serve and mean it. And, and when I call her, maybe she'd be having problems with, I don't know, a little tiff with her husband, or maybe she had a problem with a team member. And I would just do what I do, coaching and talk her down and talk her about the positive, not, not ever trying to get anything. I had to completely let go that she was my client and just be there to serve her more as a friend or as support without expecting anything in return. Well, it was several months later, I think it might've been four or five months later, she called me out of the blue and said, Hey, would you mind presenting at the be the change? Because she knew she wanted me in her life, but it wasn't as a coach. She wanted me to be able to educate the leaders in this country and especially in the Houston area about how to improve their business. And she loved the principles that I taught. Now, if I would have let Dana go because she didn't sign up with me during that one session, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be the change twice. I wouldn't have the clients I have and I definitely wouldn't have been at reunion. So that is my ultimate example of maintaining relationships. And when you email, when you call, when you text, whatever it is, don't do it with the intention of, you know, get you right this is you know what am I going to get out of this put it out there to serve what can I do for you okay because with your team it's not always about setting up parties and selling those candles it's about if you're not motivated in your heart and if you're not in a good place whether it's you're you're sick or you're having a problem with the relationship you're not going to be able to bring in team members or keep them or sell okay so get to the heart of your team and get to the heart of anybody that wants to buy from you all right. So that's continued relationships number number two. And number three, I actually kind of touched on a little bit. It's that it's not about you. You have this goal. And at the very end, I really want to talk about strategizing and calendarizing things about setting goals. But you have the goal. 
but the goal is not just with you, it's the big picture. It's you, it's your team, it's everybody that you come in contact with. So you just want to keep that in mind to stay away from me, 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 and realize and give uh, credit to everyone else that is out there as well. Okay. So, um, for example, uh, another client that I had was I teach people how to tap into their intuition, right? I, the next step get to get to 15,000 clients, whatever it is that you want. And so you get quiet and you ask the universe, what's the next step I can take? Well, one of my clients heard that her answer was, the answer was, how can you serve? And so that's weird. I got my question answered with a question. But she went into that and started thinking, okay, well, how can I serve? How can I serve? Well, there had been a man that moved into a business a couple blocks from where hers was that she noticed and several times she told herself you should go inside and introduce yourself go inside and introduce yourself but she never did but when she had that thought how could I search she's like okay I know this is what I need to do so she went in and she did she was uh, she sold life insurance she didn't try to sell him life insurance she didn't try to get anything she went in there to serve so she said I know all the people in this community I know where to help you get connections and she just gave everything she could to help build up this business and that was it and she walked out the door but within a week she had a new client and it wasn't because she went in there to say buy for me buy for me I sell insurance she went in there and said what can I do for you and then so he did ask in return so what do you do and she gave a brief explanation still not trying to push for herself we don't want push energy we want pull we want people to be able to fall into us not us grab them Okay, so what I would love to ask of you hearing about uh, either relationships that you've nurtured or how you've been able to be heart centered and hear other stories or just ideas about how you can serve, serve under other individuals. I would love for y'all to share on a couple ideas um, amongst yourselves so you can get ideas how you can serve as uh, Pink Zebra Consultants. That's when it's always quiet. <laughs> I'll start calling on people if you want me to. I can do that. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a story for me, and, and some of them have heard my story. But I um I got asked for the first time to join the direct sales world by a woman that I met at a parenting class that I did not know before that. And her simple question to me was, "You'd be great at what you do." I mean, that's all she said. And I said, of course, what do you do? It's that pull energy kind of thing. She didn't have to give me a dissertation about what she did. I just asked because she put that out there that, that way. But I wasn't ready at that point. You know, I had just left my corporate job and I had two kids at home and I was not ready. So she did exactly what you talked about. She just every three months would call me and say, has anything changed in your life? You know, should we start building this relationship? A whole year later is when I decided that I was ready for something and she was there. So it's amazing when I think about that because four phone calls it took, we had conversation every time about our families and that relationship was building. If she had not done that, I would never have called her a year later. There's no way. So, and I actually just had a phone call with her tonight. I mean, that was in 1991. So here we are in 2019 and she is still an incredibly, fabulous friend of mine that obviously will be a friend of mine for the rest of my life. But the reality of it is that she put herself out there and then she built that relationship. And, you know, we've had this friendship now for what, 28 years. So it's pretty amazing. So I totally, totally buy into the building relationship thing. And so many times I find that people are just afraid to make that phone call. Someone's rejected them once. And so they're like, they must not be interested. And then you don't stay connected because you don't want to feel pushy. And the reality of it is, if you go into it, like you said, Laura, with this intent of building relationship, it changes everything. Yes. Anyway, that's mine. Now someone else's turn. I might have to call on somebody. <laughs> I think Gina looks pretty good. How's Gina doing? <laughs> Are you willing, Gina? Rhea looks like she's ready. What do you think, Rhea? Yep, you're muted, just so you know. So one of the things you're asking then is a building relationship story, Laura, or something that they could do to serve another? 
any way that they, they can serve another, whether they've done before or any ideas that they have just to share with the group. Um, so what an things. example would be something like um, if I wanted to help someone uh, like make their business easier, like a real estate professional as an example, because mm -hmm. they always struggle with how they can reward clients once the client makes a decision to make a purchase of a home. I mean, we obviously have something that will that and bring those memories to their home, that kind of thing. Is it something like that? It could be. It could be anything from being willing to bring your, you know, your sprinkles into a business and mm -hmm. donating that. So it makes the um, office smell better, which in turn you can leave your cards there and then people can, you know, walk out. Well, this is great. This is wonderful. Just anywhere that you can serve or to make somebody's life better. And even with relationships. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you talk to somebody and they say, well, my mom just died. Well, they're not going to be ready to set up a business at that point. So the next time you call them, you don't say you're interested in doing Pink Zebra. Now it's been six months since your mom died. You ask, mm -hmm. you say, I remember our conversation about our mom. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay, good. So Rhea, okay. you stayed unmuted. Do you have something you could share? Um, actually, I do. I, um, I work at a financial institution and last year I did some helping out at a different branch and I met a young lady that had just been hired in. Actually, we were covering until she got trained. Um, a young um, single mom and we got to talking one quiet afternoon about you know, how hard it was for her. She's trying to raise her little girl and now her mom lost her job and now she was trying to um, help her mom with bills. And, and so we got talking about the HEROES program. Mm. And, um, and I, I said, if, and she, and she was talking about this daycare was um, help, trying to help her get her some assistance through the state and she had a bunch of hoops to ju um, jump through. I said, would well, I have a program that um, help single moms with their daycare, would you be interested in hearing about it? And um, so I, I talked to her briefly about it and, and uh, she was really interested. So I got her the paperwork, she took it in. Um, this was about a year ago, right before the holidays. Um, her little girl's birthday is right around Christmas. So um, I haven't worked in that office since because, you know, she's fully trained and she can work there. And, but I got the chance, um, we kept in touch every so often, you know, she, she needed to know what was her next step. You know, she needed more paperwork, send the video in and everything to, to continue with her, her, um, financial aid through Pink Zebra. And, um, last year, and I'm going to cry. I swear I will, because this is my heart. I was a single mom and the heroes program is why I joined Pink Zebra was to help single moms because I got, I had so much help from my, my family. And I know that my story is different, but there's, there's a lot of ladies out there that have a hard time. They don't had have, have the support I had. So that's why I joined. And I finally, I saw in her an opportunity to actually realize my dream to bless someone else. <laughs> so she said, you know, she, we talked for a little bit on the phone and she said that, um, because I helped her with this program through Pink Zebra, she was able to provide not only Christmas for her little girl, but a wonderful birthday. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, bawling my eyes out. We were both crying. Um, two weeks ago, I got to visit again in the office on my day off. I tell you what, this program has to be the biggest blessing I have ever seen in my life because she said, you know what? The director of this daycare kept asking her questions about, well, how do you um, submit the the next video or what is it that you how did you do this how she just thought that you know she was just trying to keep up on her she found out there are eight other what? single moms that are being helped because that daycare director took her blank paperwork and filed paperwork and helped them out too wow that's yes i know okay Sorry, I <laughs> I've got goosebumps just thinking about it. And we were both sitting there in the lobby crying because that's my dream. That's my dream is to help single moms out like that. And because, uh, because of Pink Zebra, 
has this program and I saw, I saw in this young lady's heart that, you know, she was trying so hard and she didn't have the help that she needed that just by being able to reach out and, and, and help her with this, that there are so many others that are being blessed through this program. I'm, I'm really glad you shared that. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, because I don't see that side of it very often. You know what I mean? So it, it's kind of like we never forget about heroes at all. But when you hear what you just witnessed, that's amazing. And I know Michelle heard one of her goals. I mean, everybody's got financial goals and you know, maybe promotion goals, all that kind of thing. But one of her main goals every year is how many days of daycare that she knows that she can donate with every $500 party she does. And she tracks that all year. Mm -hmm. So that's just part of her way to give back. So great story. Thank you. Yeah, so you may want to say something about that, Laura, but I mean, that's amazing. Well, what I love about that in particular is when I talked about, you know, telling three stories, is about how Pink Zebra served. We could start with, you know, Kelly and Tom, why did they start this company? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, knowing their story and how, what, how they wanted to change the world. The second one is how Pink Zebra has served you. I know y'all enjoyed some of your ascended trips because I um, talked mm -hmm. to people when you came back and, uh, or the fact that it helps you be a stay at home mom. I mean, stay at home instead of being in a corporate office for 40 hours a week. It gives you flexibility. You learn more structure. There's so many things. So um, really explaining to people, that's part of the planning the scene, how Pink Zebra has served you. And then the third aspect of stories is how is Pink Zebra, just like the, the grandma candle is what I called it, how has Pink Zebra served others and with the daycare and those type of things. Sharing these stories, not that, you know, we need to get this many team members, but this is what we can give. Those were the three stories that I was referring to. So I love the daycare mm -hmm. story. Absolutely. Anybody else have one that they would be willing to share? All right, I'll share again. So um, my stepbrother, just passed away yesterday, by the way. So sorry. I'm not all cheery right now, but oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Man, this is a huge thing. I want I'm thankful for Pink Zebra. Like I won it from a a contest. I won some boxes with one of my photos. And anyway, decided to join under Dana, looked it up, found Dana, joined under her, and I'm able to finally walk my like stepmom's dog me and my son got to do that and i wouldn't be able to do that with any other job and i'm able to help any time of the day my kids school calls me i'm there and i'm thankful and grateful for that with the company that they gave me that i have that opportunity i guess mm -hmm. that's amazing i'm sorry to hear about your stepbrother no, you guys it's fine just wanted oh, to take boy. And I love the fact that she just went into gratitude as well. That's one of the highest vibrational feelings that we can have. So that's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. So make sure and send Crystal your love and support and mm -hmm. your positive thoughts over the next mm -hmm. few weeks, few months, whatever mm -hmm. needs to be done for sure. I'll keep you my thoughts, Crystal, for sure. Right. It's kind of amazing when you, um, you know, have life things that happen, how many times I hear people say in this company that it's the pink zebra of people, a family that responds and has lifted them up and, you know, helped them through some challenges or some tough times like that. It's kind of crazy. You just don't expect that when you join a business like this, that you're going to get this whole community of people that make such a difference in your life. So it's great. Right. And you can reach out so many ways through uh, an instant message, through a text, through uh, voicemail and, and singing the song. There's mm -hmm. so many different ways that you can do that. Writing a note, that never happens anymore. Take 10 minutes to write a letter and put a stamp on it, send in the mail. I guarantee you're going to have a good response for sure. Just tell somebody that you're thinking of them. I just mailed some of those today. See, there you go. <laughs> so there you go. Mm -hmm. I love to send my clients gifts. I really do, especially if there's a, a book that I really enjoy that I feel like could make a difference in their lives. I love to send that off or whatever it is. I've sent gratitude jars before that they can use. I think I did that was for Christmas last year, but it's just so important to give, give, give because it does come back. I promise. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you all have a Facebook page where you can, if, if there's some ideas that come to people about how they can serve, that they can share that? 
Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. available? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a leaders page, so I can post something out there tomorrow. Okay. Um, I can definitely do that because we'll post this. I usually convert this Zoom thing to YouTube and then we'll post it on there and then I can put it in there. So, okay. Okay. That'd be great. And it's kind of funny when you come into this kind of business and, you know, we just talked about this community that you don't really anticipate being what it is because you have no idea. I mean, if anyone's not been in direct sales before, you just don't know what this community is all about. And so, and it's something that we don't often share when we're talking to a prospect. Um, and the thing that I see is that you get surrounded by like-minded people and people that like to support and serve and, you know, have maybe a different um, path in mind instead of traditional jobs. So we tend to think a little bit differently. And I think many times it's enriching to us in so many ways that, again, when we're talking to a prospect, we don't really talk about that, you know, what kind of community they have that we are so fortunate to be a part of. So anyway. Absolutely. It's just so important to, to hear their story. Mm -hmm. Because after you, you got to think about when, when you started and how scary it was, right? Especially if you quit your job. Oh my goodness. But then you get in the swing of things. It's not so bad. So one way you can really serve is with patience. <laughs> it might take people two weeks. It might take them two months. It might take them two years to finally come around, but just loving them where they are and continuing to reach out and be patient with no matter what that is. Is, a, is actually a great way that you can serve and they know that they can count on you that you're still going to be there and you're not going to judge them regardless of the decision now if they're mean to you and they're not nice you don't have to call them back you don't <laughs> want to be with somebody that respects you back too so mm -hmm. keep that in mind for sure absolutely i have a couple more points and i know you didn't want it to go over 45 minutes do you mind if I move on to those? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So if y'all have any other ideas about how you can serve, whether it's your team or another consultant or a customer that comes in, whatever that is, I would love it if y'all would share that so you could give each other some uh, feedback and ideas. Okay. Um, the second point, actually, I re reached out to Jessica today and I said, Hey, what would you love for me to present about? And she, the, one of the things that she said was so important. She, um, I say, if you don't like where you are, step back and, and what are you thinking? What's going on in your head? Because whatever you're creating in your head, that's what you're manifesting in your life. I love, you'll hear it every time probably. Henry Ford says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And maybe your business isn't going well and you're focusing on that, but it's not, that's why I work with people in all four quadrants health, relationships, vocation, and time and money freedom. And because if your health isn't good and you're feeling bad, you're not going to want to give each other, give people a phone call. And when you do, it's not going to sound good because you're in pain. Or if you just had a fight with your partner, the person that you're in a relationship with, then you're not going to be connected with the person on the phone that you're talking to because you're going to back your head, be having all these thoughts about the argument that you had. So step back. And if things aren't going right with Pink Zebra, I want you to step back and I want you to look at your whole life, what you think about everything that's going on. And especially those words, I am, okay. I'm frustrated with this. I'm sick. I'm hurt. I'm sad. Whatever that is, really start focusing in on those. I am, I am broke because anything after the word I am is just going to be magnified and grown into your life. But the reason um, Jessica wanted me to bring this up because I told her I was going to talk about relationships today was she said one of the reasons that she excelled so quickly was that we didn't even actually focus on pink zebra when we started for about the first three or four months, it might even been five, we focused on her relationship with her husband and her family because that's what was strained. Pink Zebra doing okay, right? Not the best, not like it is now, but when she improved that part of her life, uh, then things just, just exploded because they're all 
uh, they're all working together. You can't just devote 100% of the time to Pink Zebra and not spend time in building relationships with people outside of the office. The same with your health. You can't spend 60 hours on Pink Zebra and not eat healthy because your body's going to break down. So if you're not happy with the way things are going on in your business, don't just think about what's going on with that, what's going on in every other um, aspect of your life and, and how your thoughts are going with that. Okay, so Jessica, that's for you. That's what she wanted me to talk about today. Can I ask a question about that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So if someone says, I am sad, I'm unhappy with whatever that's going on in my life, do you recommend people, um, you know, reflect and think how can they change that? Or do you just recommend first starting out with changing your language? Okay. Sense? Well, I don't want you grief. Perfect example. You got to feel your feelings. Mm -hmm. You got to, you got to go through them. Now, if it's been six months and you're still out of bed and that's not where you want to be, that's when you step into the one question, what would I love? Okay. What would I love? I would love to be happy. I would love to be energetic. I would love to that point that you want to be. And so that's when you start transitioning your thoughts. When you say, okay, I would love to be happy. Great. What can I do to make myself happy? Well, today I can buy myself a Tootsie Roll, whatever that is, or today I can pet a dog, but it's really guilt going away from I'm sad because it keeps you in there to what would I love? I would love to be happy. Well, what's that going to take and start taking little bitty baby steps. Okay. But if you're constantly saying, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, you're going to keep getting that. So what you want to move to is I'm abundant, I'm abundant, because it's not going to happen until you say it enough and you believe it. And you have to convince yourself because you have put such limitations in your mind that's constricting you from how big you can grow. If you think you can only get 10, 10, 10 members and that's all you're going to get. If you set your mind to, I, I have a hundred, I have a hundred, I have a hundred. And that is what starts being attracted to you because of that. Does that answer your question, Connie? Yes, it does. And I have a quick story about that because I had in my second business, I was recruited by someone that, I knew in a previous company, but I wasn't connected to it all. But when I made a decision to move on from the company I was with, she's someone that I got connected to. And she was amazing at that kind of thing that you're talking about. And she, I remember, took this piece of paper, you know, just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. She drew a sunshine down here, you know, like the half sunshine, and she drew 10 rays out from that sunshine on this piece of paper. And she wrote down 10 people's names that she just believed were going to be leaders on her team when she started the business. So it wasn't even people she had talked to yet that she had really worked with. Most people she probably knew in some way, whether they were a previous business or, you know, a friend of hers, whatever. But she designed her thing and attracted that energy in such an amazing way. And I'm telling you, True story, 18 months later, we're at a, like a leadership meeting together and she showed us all this piece of paper she had written almost two years before and every one of those names were leaders on her team. So it, to me, it's like that whole story I think about so often, that was a long time ago in my business and it always stuck in my mind that she just, she believed and she created as a result of just committing to that. She, she she wasn't going to take no for an answer for sure, but she, her, her thing came to fruition. It was pretty, pretty incredible. That showed it me works. the power of positive thought right there. I can tell yes. you. And the energy that she gave to it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. This is why I encourage everybody to write a vision statement with all those four quadrants. And when you write it, this is, this is goal setting, but you write it as a story mm -hmm. and you say, I am so grateful that I have 400 team members. I, I now go on, I have gone on incentive, incentive trips every year for the past 10 years. I have my new home that's three bedroom, four bath, 16 living rooms, whatever it is that you want. But you start writing this stuff down, but you write it down in present tense as if it's already there. So you start feeling what it feels like to actually have that. And then it just comes to you naturally. But until you write your vision and decide what it is you want to do, you're never going to get there. So you really want to find clarity. And one of those can be by making a list. These are the 101 things I would love to be 
do or have is what I suggest. And have it to do with pink zebra, have it to do with your health, have, have it to do anything you would want to go or see or experience. But you've got to make your list, you've got to make your vision statement to have that stepping stone to know what you want to focus on. And so you can start heading there and asking the universe, what's the next step I can take to do whatever it is of that part of your vision. I would even encourage some of you as leaders to take something like one of the leadership maps. We've got these maps that show, you know, what it takes to promote to any given rank. And if you've got this vision, um, Crystal had one for her promoting to director, you know, you've got this vision of what it's going to take to do that. Write it out and create it, even if it's not even there yet. I mean, I, I'm all about that self-affirmation thing. Like you've got to create that vision first before you can really bring it to fruition. So. I want to encourage all of you, like wherever you are today, you know, what's the next rank? What's the ultimate thing you want to get to? And then start designing it. Yep. So. But don't let yourself be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So you have the end result. I am a director. I have my boots. Right? Mm -hmm. But then you got to back it up. And that's the last thing I was going to talk to you today was about calendarizing everything because I know you have this great goal for November, but what we want to do, whether it's for our, our annual goal of income, you know, you start with the, the full year. Okay, this is the overall encompassing that I want. And then you realize, okay, how much do I need to do per month? How much do I need to do per week? And then I recommend, which I give to my clients, a daily agenda that breaks everything down in 15 minute increments. So, because some of us think, oh, it's only going to take me 20 minutes to make this phone call. And then you're on for an hour and a half. Or it's only it's going to take me an hour and a half to get this paperwork done when it when it takes 10 minutes, right? So you write everything down and you really start to notice how long it takes because I don't want people to get frustrated. Oh, this took too long, but you're going to learn from that next day you're going to schedule it. But you stick to that. You stick to your schedule. You stick to your guns. You put your phone on airplane mode, right? Instead of checking those text messages or Facebook and you stay away from the laundry. You stay at your desk, you, wherever your office is, and, and stay focused and make the commitment to that time on that schedule. Because it's not about being crystal, you didn't become director overnight. You've been doing this for a long time, right? But there's baby steps that you can take every day, even if it's five minutes uh, dedicated to Pink Zebra, but dedicating that time every day is, is gonna continue your growth. So looking at our goal as a company to bring in 15,000 new customers, so all of you consider, you look at the size of your team and you yourself personally, like what could you contribute to that number? So maybe your team, you want to add 200 new customers. Maybe you personally want to add 15. You know, maybe it's five new customers every single week in the month of November. So that's going to need some personal reach out calls, maybe get some sampling out, maybe get them into scent flirt. So it's a way to, you know, get that person introduced to what we're all about. So I think everybody here needs to really think about what do I want to personally contribute to this goal? Because we love being part of a winning thing, whatever that might be. And then what can my team contribute to the entire goal of the company? Because all of us win in that respect. I mean, if you're adding that many new customers to your team or to your own personal business, it does nothing but benefit everybody. And we as a company love to celebrate when we make these goals happen. So it's a good thing. And another idea, bringing it back around to how can I serve, go volunteer somewhere. Because you talk about bringing in team members, but it's not just about setting up your table. You could go in your pink zebra, whatever, where you're, where you're tiara. It doesn't matter. But go and serve the community and go, go out there to get, just go out there to talk and then share with them how, you know, what pink zebra has done for you, what, how they could serve other people and make their lives better. But even just going to a volunteer opportunity with only the intention to serve, whether you wear your pink zebra shirt or not, it will reap great benefits. You never know when it's going to come. You never know, but just know that you are giving in return. You, it will be given back to you in a different way. Absolutely. All right. Anybody have any questions for Laura before we wrap up tonight? They usually don't, so don't feel bad. <laughs> They're okay. usually quiet at this point when I ask that at the end. That's so, funny. Anybody? 
I see. Thank you. I see it. Thank you. Thank you for such insight. I'm seeing. So there's a couple of people that are typing some messages. So, Laura, what I learned from you, and I met you two years ago at Be the Change. Remember uh -huh. me, I'm the girl that wanted the one million subscribers on YouTube. Oh. Oh. It's slowly happening. But what I realized is three things a day to accomplish, and then I'm done. Anything else is a bonus. That's what I've learned. Well, so thank you for good. that one. That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, Laura, thank you very much for being on with us this evening. Thank you for all of you that joined us tonight. And uh, I'm going to post these things out on the leaders page tomorrow. And I'm going to ask you all too to share like what your team goal is and what your personal goal is in terms of contributing to our November goal. They're still working, um, certainly <laughs> working on what's happening in October because we have a big goal for October too. But it's been uh, it's been an exciting couple of months since reunion, and certainly appreciate your input that you or impact that you had there as well, Laura. Thank you, Dr. Laura, I should say. But uh, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm Laura. I'm Dom Laura for sure. All right. Thanks everyone for being on, and thanks again. All right. Thanks for all your words of wisdom. Bye, guys. Thank you very right. much. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.